So having watched a couple of videos about the Netherlands, one thing I'm coming to learn is how amazing, how world leading Netherlands is when it comes to engineering and whether that's the waterways in the Netherlands, whether it's the towns and cities that are so greatly designed and we're going to look at that in a bit more detail. This is why the Netherlands is insanely well designed. So interested to hear what people in the Netherlands actually think about this. We see here Germany. I feel like in the world stage, Germany has the reputation as being this leader in engineering. But for me, Netherlands is right up there from what I've learned so far. And yeah, of course, I want to learn more. So tell me what you think about this video and the points raised in it. This is a map of bike path density in Europe. All the purple lines are bike paths. And if you divide your attention to the left part of this map, you'll see a coastal country with a lot of purple lines. That's actually even just shocked me how densely that's colored with these bike lanes. I know that cycling is synonymous with the Netherlands. It's like everybody has a bike. There's more bikes than humans, I believe, in the Netherlands, 23 million to 17 million, if I remember correctly. But to see the coverage there, it's so well connected around the whole country. Have you cycled all around the country? What's the furthest you've cycled? Do you always ride a bike? This is the Netherlands, a densely populated country that knows a thing or two about designing brilliant infrastructure. And the bike paths play a significant role in that. See, with a population of 17.4 million people and a landmass of approximately 41.5 thousand square kilometers, the Netherlands is smaller in size yet more densely populated than most European countries. Oh, so, in order that, to actually. navigate that, they've come up with effective and interesting ways to handle population movement in and around their country. The most notable of which is, of course, the cycling infrastructure. And yes, it is as serious as everybody says it is as it enables the 23 million bikes that are in the Netherlands to roam the streets. And by the way, 23 million bikes means that there are 1.3 bikes per capita. That's absolutely insane. I mean, what would the bike per capita be in the United States? Maybe 0.5? What? It's 0.3. That would mean if you met an American, there is a greater chance they're obese than them owning a bicycle. Matt. Anyway, when you combine the Netherlands bike infrastructure with its amazing public transport, you get a ridiculously smooth and efficient system. Here's how it works in Amsterdam. Yeah, just to check with regards to the infrastructure being as developed as it is at the moment, where did this originate from? When did it originate? Has it, is it always being improved? We see the coverage there. It doesn't look like there could be any more coverage, but... Are they making more coverage? Are they improving the the quality of the roads and the paths and so on? Is it all of the highest standard already? I love it. Again, when he compared it to American obesity, it's, a, it's like the connection is there, not just owning a bike, but you see that uh, how, ne how, people, how Dutch people are so healthy. And the cycling, I think, is a big part of that. Commuters will use their bikes to get to and enter transit stations, where they simply park their bikes in these enormous bike yeah. parking garages. Then they'll travel on either a bus, tram or train to their final destination. But most of the time the fastest and most convenient option is simply taking the bikes to the final destination. But why is cycling the most convenient option? What has the Netherlands done for this to be the case? Well, the country has made cycling incredibly easy, with 32,000 kilometers of bike lanes that aren't just a small strip along a heavily trafficked road. Now, the Dutch do things differently. They have marked out red asphalt pavements like this, strictly for cyclists. The only time cars and bikes end up on the same road is when the speed limit is less than 30 kilometers an hour, and car volume is low. Any higher than that, and there is a clear separation like this one, even on highways and roundabouts. But the Netherlands is a whole lot more than just biking and their capital city, Amsterdam. Yeah, so with regards to that as well, I live in Malaysia. They actually try to implement this cycling path. It just doesn't get used. I don't know if it's because of the weather so hot. People just don't want to cycle. People just don't have that mentality to do this, to be fit, to help the environment. Uh, it's just not very uh, well implemented. And yeah, to see how it is here in Netherlands, it's so organized. I really think it's like 
a great example for every other country. And to be honest, the most impressive infrastructure in the Netherlands is not even in Amsterdam. To see that, we have to go to Utrecht, a city that lies right here south of Amsterdam. It hosts the largest bike parking facility in the world, room to park over 12 and a half thousand bicycles, and it has 24 seven camera surveillance. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. There's no way this can be replicated in other countries. This is alien-like. But that's a myth, and there's a very simple reason for that. Just take a look at Rotterdam. During World War II, the city was practically demolished and looked, well, like this. The Dutch had to rebuild everything, and they chose to go for an automobile-centered design, which is exactly how North American cities were built too. And considering where the Netherlands is today, it's crazy to think that many Dutch cities were heading in this direction too. But by the 70s, Rotterdam residents were tired of major road fatalities and plummeting cycling and walking culture. So they demanded reform and the regulators listened. Public transportation was then heavily invested in, and roads were rebuilt to facilitate bike lanes. After which, cycling regained its popularity. This just goes to show that even North American cities can do this if they choose to do so. Yeah, that's a good point as well, and I guess also the Dutch mentality would have to, would, uh, would help with this. I feel like they're much more open to buying into this. They can see the long-term benefits. Being from the UK, people are very resistant to change. You try to implement something like this, a far-reaching bike cycling path pathway, people are always looking at the negatives. They're like, oh, but I'm not going to have as much space to drive. Uh, cyclists are just going to get in the way. Cyclists have a very bad reputation in the UK for some reason. I don't buy into that one. Uh, but do you think the Dutch mentality really helps with that? Again, a, a specific example like Rotterdam, if you're from there, did you see that change? Were people very open to it? Uh, was it just a very successful thing? It clearly was successful, but do you think the Dutch mentality was the one of the reasons for that? But the determinism and people-centered planning of the Netherlands extends out of the cities and into Dutch suburbs as well. To bring this point home, let's compare typical Dutch suburbs to those in a state that's just as bustling and growing, in the United States, Florida. Now sure, Florida is 3.4 times larger than the Netherlands, but the argument should still stand. So here is a typical Miami suburb. What do you notice? There's a lot of greenery, but mostly there's a lot of roads and they're specifically made for cars. Sure, there are sidewalks, but they are thin and can yeah, barely accommodate a cycler and say. pedestrian at the same time. Mm. And now let's look at a Dutch suburb. The homes here are much smaller, and that's an important detail, as it leaves more space for communal centers like parks and proper biking and walking lanes separated from the road by greenery. I can definitely understand that it seems like a sacrifice to have smaller homes, but what you get in return is efficiency. And if time is the most valuable thing we have, then this system is superior. And while Dutch efficiency has become somewhat of a trademark for the country, things weren't always so blissful and enviable. You see, technically speaking, a large part of the Netherlands should not exist, and this is what amazes me the most. See, the Netherlands was notorious for constant flooding thanks to its low elevation and closeness to the North Sea. But the Dutch have found a way to beat the ocean multiple times. This is the reason why nearly 20% of the land in the Netherlands is reclaimed land from the many marshes, swamps, lakes, and of course the sea. But how? Well, two words. Delta works. After a deadly storm in 1953 that covered over 150,000 hectares of land and took the lives of an estimated 2,000 people, the Dutch decided something had to be done. Delta Works was the answer. Delta Works is a vast network of 13 dams and barriers featuring sluices, locks, dikes, and levees. They shelter off these four inlets, namely Herringblad Dam, Rubus Dam, Wusterscheldekering, and Fersegatam. I'm sorry, Dutch people, I tried my best. Anyway, they used these to reduce the coastline by 700 kilometers and remove the need for smaller and weaker levees and dams that would require constant maintenance. Pretty ingenious, I gotta say. But the Dutch haven't just prevented floodings, they've also created new land. And they achieved this without using modern technology. How? Well, first they would section off the areas they wanted to reclaim, whereafter they would drain the water out by harvesting the energy of the wind using, of course, 
windmills. This created flat plains comprised of a very unique soil that happens to be perfect for growing tulips. And this is why the Netherlands account for 80% of the world's tulip exports, which is kind of strange to think about. But today, these waters and innovations have earned the Netherlands some pretty envious titles, including the largest storm surge barrier in the world that laid the ground for the largest and most efficient seaport in Europe, the port of Rotterdam. Located here in the delta of the Rhine and Meuse rivers, Rotterdam is in a perfect strategic location for ships coming from or going into the North Sea. To understand the sheer size of this port, here is a map of Manhattan laid on top. As you can see, the port of Rotterdam is about one and a half times Whoa. the size of Manhattan. I actually, it's huge. I, yeah, I actually didn't really appreciate that this was just the port and how huge it was. You see, like obviously somewhere like Manhattan is also very densely populated as well, but just having this and all the trade, all the, the just the strategic importance it can have to uh, trade for not just Netherlands, for Europe as well. And just going back to the reclaimed land part as well, how they managed to reclaim that land and use it for tulips and parts and also turn that into such a huge, huge export. It's like so beneficial in multiple ways as well as being great feats of engineering. It's actually so impressive. And with 82.5% of the Netherlands GDP coming from exports, yeah. it's fair to say that the port of Rotterdam is really important. Mm. I could go on and on about this port's efficiency, but all you need to know is that it wins best port infrastructure year after year. The Dutch are incredibly talented at designing great infrastructure. I mean, just look at the Amsterdam airport, Schiphol, the third busiest airport in Europe. It looks pretty average, until you consider the number of people moving through this structure. Schiphol facilitates 68 to 80 million passengers annually to 332 direct destinations, utilizing its six runways facing multiple directions. Schiphol coordinates an average of 1500 to 1600 departures and landings per day, giving them an hourly average of 110 to 120 aircrafts. And Schiphol accomplishes this despite being smaller than other major airports like Adolfo Suarez Madrid in Spain or the Leonardo da Vinci International Airport in Italy. The best thing about this airport though is that once passengers arrive, they have a number of transportation options, as the high-speed Talis and Columbus trains can be accessed just beneath the terminal building. From here, you can take a 15-minute ride to the Amsterdam Central Station, or use the Dutch rail network to travel across the country. Honestly, you could go anywhere from here. If trains aren't your style, then the airport offers affordable express buses as well. The funny thing about this airport though is that it's 4 meters below sea level, sitting on what used to be Harlem Lake. But all in all though, the Netherlands is an overload of- Yeah, just with regards to Schiphol, I've been there quite a lot of times, whether it's to arrive in Netherlands or whether it's for transit, coming back from Asia to Scotland, uh, flying uh, with KLM. And I've always loved it. It's a great air airport, very quick to get through and things like that as well. Uh, and yeah, really to learn a bit more about it is very, very interesting and a great feat of engin engineering also, as well as being very well connected. Of intelligent design. And while some people might think it's nearly impossible to implement these methods into other countries, the reality is these methods can be replicated any place in the world if the people and leadership are willing to collaborate and listen to one another and invest in infrastructure that is people, environment, and future centered. Thank you for watching. Yeah, that's uh, very interesting. It's not just about specifically engineering, planning, design, it's also about that Dutch mentality, Dutch personality, even taking it right down to that, being that Dutch directness, being egalitarian, being able to like work together collaboratively and come up and create these sort of things. It talked about this being able to be implemented in other countries, but other countries maybe not having that ability to do so, having that structure with regards to being eg egalitarian, to actually work together and do things like this. People just don't want to, but Netherlands, yeah, is insanely well designed, but it's through the Dutch people and their mentality, as well as just their intelligence, their education, and just being great engineers. Fantastic little video, and it's great to get a better insight for me. Uh, tell me what you think about that, being Dutch, and what one are you, what thing are you most proud of or most impressed by. Thanks.